We're also going to see the Renaissance Revival, which of course is going to emphasize a lot of these Italian Renaissance ideas. They're not looking so much at the English Renaissance or the French. Generally, they're looking specifically in Italy. And why? Because they're seeing it again at the 1851 Great Exhibition. And if you're wondering, these paintings are watercolors done at the time to document what was going on in the period. And here we see people looking at some of this furniture, uh, in this case, some Rococo furniture, uh, but it's all over the place. And you could go into these different elements, uh, different manufacturers had booths, different nations had booths, and you could get ideas, which is why we're seeing so many of them in this period. It's not just the Great Exhibition of 1851, but all of the exhibitions of the Victorian period. So we're going to see things like this. This chair should remind you a lot of a Savonarola chair, but of course it in no way is going to fold. Uh, it's reminiscent of almost the Dante chair in that manner. But you'll notice there's nothing about it that really speaks to the Renaissance other than the overall form. The decoration is more 19th century. The use of masks, the use of this sort of shingle pattern, which we never really see in the Renaissance, the use of almost a barge board seat. Uh, so these are those uh, interesting tongue and groove boards that are frequently used to build, for example, river ships or river boats, and then they're broken apart and used as building material, especially in the United States, but it's used as a decorative form in parts of Europe. Now, we also see larger pieces. Of course, we know that this can't be an actual Renaissance piece. The glass gives it away. The use of ebonizing gives it away because we don't see that in the Italian Renaissance, but we do see the use of intarsia, of uh, marquetry. We see, so we see that veneer work that's been used, but we also see some element of Japanese and Asian influence once again. So ideas that should never have come together are. And this very high polished finish, uh, this is not necessarily typical of the period. This would take a great deal. I'd be very nervous about this piece. It uh, looks very much like either it's lived its life in a museum or uh, it's some kind of reproduction uh, of the period. At least it's definitely not Renaissance. It could well be 19th century. But they're mixing in all of these later details. See here, we have some of those uh, flower and husk decorations from the neoclassical. So a lot of different ideas being tied in. One thing that we do see in this period is Italian micro mosaics. Now, uh, this is the piece on the left, and then here's a detail on the right. This was recently auctioned. And the use of micro mosaics, these tiles are minute. They're the size of a grain of rice or smaller, and they're put together in panels, and then the panels are cut and put into place. But it is incredible fine detail. You can see it in the uh, dome, in the niche here, in the top of the niche over St. George. And here we have St. George. We have a depiction of probably Adam and Eve, since we're dealing with a religious theme, clearly, with an image of St. George. Now, here again, we have a Renaissance form, but some of the details give it away as being Renaissance revival. For example, the use of the gold overlay, the use of the uh, almost ebonized wood and background, and the use of the micro mosaic. So if you're looking at an interior of this period, you're often looking at something that's going to draw in these ideas, but it's going to be far more furnished than what we would expect from the actual period. The use of uh, the picture rail, for example, and images, the use of mirrors. But then they're going to bring in the Italian and Greek architectural ideas, such as this column with very mixed ideas. It's a hybrid column. Uh, here we have a table with sort of an Egyptian or maybe a mythological head for the legs coming down into the foot uh, with the use of that large stringer. But then we have the use of a nodule, which we see in the Romanesque, not in the Renaissance. 
So very different ideas. These are all going to be far busier when we get to the Victorian than the original Renaissance forms would have been. In a Renaissance room, this all would have been painted. We would have frescoes. We would have panels, maybe a diaper pattern, all sorts of things going on that aren't going on here because they've gone for wallpaper. So a lot of new ideas.